Good morning, Year 13s. It is another bright morning. It's beautiful, it's lovely, and the day stretches ahead of us, untouched, unsight. And therefore, we're going to try and do a little something to um, sully that. Uh, the white void needs marking. Now, usually what I do around about this time of year is that we start a series of revision lessons. I go through the technique and then we collaboratively create a bunch of mind maps with colored pens and a whiteboard and all, all the hullabaloo you can imagine. Now, I could do that over Teams, but my experiments thus far have shown that it's really difficult for you guys to see the whiteboard and it's even more difficult than it is in real life. And people have complained bitterly about my use of different colors in real life. So I can only imagine how much worse that would be on video. So I'm gonna to have to take a leaf out of Miss Wibberley's book and I'm going to have to create for you a resource or rather I'm gonna to have to take a leaf out of Miss Wibberley's book by stealing it. So a few years ago, 2014 to be exact, Miss Wibbly, the machine that she is, created a fabulous resource for the then AS unit F963 on Churchill. What I've done is I dug it up, adapted it, brushed it off, blown off the ugly parts and turned it into a booklet. So you'll have found that attached to the task that this video link was attached to. Now, I know lots of people are doing Teams uh, teaching at the moment and that makes perfect sense to me. But for this, it would be a case of introducing it to you and then bogging off um, for you guys to do it, which seems like a waste of, well, everyone's time, really. So this is designed to introduce that to you, and then we can discuss it later. And I'll sort out a Teams meeting at some point to talk about the various bits. But what I'll do is I'll introduce each section in a video like this, um, so you've got something to be getting on with, and you know roughly how much time you have to fill in each section. Now, obviously you have all the time in the world. Um, we know that mocks are coming, and therefore my job is to make sure you're as prepared as possible for that. The government leaked plan is for mini exams um, marked by teachers, so I guess us, written by exam boards, but we don't know what the questions are going to be. So we have to be as prepared as possible for when they turn up. Um, and we won't know before you guys know, so keep that in mind. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down here. I'm going to switch this and show you a section of that booklet. Now, we don't expect you necessarily to print this out. Not everyone has access to a printer, certainly not a color printer, and certainly not one with 12 sheets of paper just randomly ready to go. You, you've got a lot on with homeschooling. We understand that. So you can do this electronically. If you choose to do it electronically, there could be an advantage as you can paste in hyperlinks um, or uh, web links to something grander and more colorful than you're able to do in Word. Uh, you know, I hope, my feelings on Word and its awful method of uh, making charts and such. There's very little ability to, to import things and to move them around as much as in, say, PowerPoint. Um, but I can't make this in PowerPoint. So huh, I guess we're at an impasse. The point being, you can do what you like with these charts. And the idea is you work through. So obviously there's a, a front cover. Were this a paper or a copy, you would have a paper copy. That would be the front cover. By all means, keep that for your revision if you wish. And if you're printing it off, brilliant but don't think you have to. The first section, the one I'm going to look at is this first page over here. If I 100% it, and then, oh, maybe not then. Um, and then I page down, that's what I do. Uh, you'll find the first set of recall grids, uh, and they're all recall grids. They're basically in a, a way of doing a mind map, but in a more grid-like structure. And I like lines. I'm not a fan of mind maps, I was a reluctant convert due to my own history teacher at A-level who forced me to do two. And they're the only things I remembered for my exam. Um, not that I'm bitter, you understand. Um, got my highest marks on those questions as well. Just saying, wish I'd realized for it, my degree, I didn't get a first, just gonna put that out there. But you'll see that this recall grid is Churchill's view of events. And its big question is, why was Churchill not in office after 1930? And what were his contributions to the abdication crisis? Now you'll have notes on the abdication crisis of 1937. It seems daft to me to try and do a lecture style lesson where I talk through once again, everything you've already got in your notes. So dig them out and have a go at filling this grid in using what you find there. There's a box there on why Churchill was out of office by 1930. You will notice, by the way, it is the smallest box of all of the boxes. Um, the next box says, because uh, the, the line at the bottom there, I can't really see it, this line here is the smallest gap 
uh, what we showed up there. Uh, this is the smallest gap. There's a reason for that. The one on the right there, who in particular did not want Churchill in power during the wilderness years? Give examples. Now, we didn't tackle that particular box directly, but you should be able to intuit it from what you've got in your notes. It should be relatively simple to go, oh yeah, and it's a group of people rather than individual names. Um, what was the abdication crisis? Slightly bigger box. It's going to be a timeline. We all know it's going to be a timeline. What was Churchill's role in the abdication crisis? We're looking for two or three things that he did. Don't just say, oh, he created friends of the king. Yeah, I know he did. But what did that mean? What relevance does that have? Are there any other big names that are part of it? Now, the chances are if an examiner uses a source from this period, they're going to tell you that a named person is part of the friends of the king. Your job is to know who they are and what Churchill's role in it was. How did this affect his popularity? Well, there are two key moments there too. Um, his popularity with who? There's the voters and there's also the people in the establishment. It actually did him some favours later in life. Why it look like Churchill may not return to power during the wilderness years? That's 1930 through to 1940, in case you're wondering, there's a, a decade there where Churchill was essentially washed up, uh, an old soak. Um, so why was it based on this? What, what, what did he got so wrong? Now, my thinking is that I'll take around about 10 to 15 minutes of actual writing, along with 10 to 15 minutes of actually looking things up. Uh, so about half an hour. Uh, the next one is uh, Churchill's clash with his own party and the national government towards India. Now, the national government at this point, you've got to bear in mind, um, is later on. India, we mashed together, if you recall, when we did the notes. So we start in 1930, we go right the way through the uh, Government of India Act, we go right the way through the Roundtable Conference, that's the RTC in case you're looking at your notes, and then we continued into the Second World War to talk about things like the Bengal Famine. So this is deliberately designed to cover 1930 right the way through to 1945. It turned up in the old AS exams twice. It has not turned up since the switch in exam. Uh, so that would be about, oh goodness, um, about four or five years ago now. So keep that in mind, it could turn up. And if it does, it's likely to be the full period rather than just the bit in the 1930s, confusingly. Um, so the boxes we've got here are what was Churchill's view on empire and why did he have it? And again, you might recall you did a, a homework on researching Churchill's early life. Why was Indian independence growing more likely? So that's all things about the Simon Commission, uh, about the Government of India Act, uh, the roundtable conferences and so on and so forth. How did Churchill react to the idea of Indian independence? You'll recall um, a cartoon with him on an elephant blundering around. And you'll recall a speech that he gave to a pressure group uh, that liked him uh, with Lord Beaverbrook in it. Was Churchill right in his misgivings? Now I've added an extra, extra bit here. Um, I've added hint, absolutely not, because he wasn't. But Churchill apologists and many establishment historians argue that certain circumstances following the partition of India in 1947 proved Churchill right. I disagree, but your job is to work out what Churchill's problems with Indian independence were and how the events of later, 1947, when they actually got independence, could be used to potentially argue that he was in the right. People do. You may agree, and that's fine. Just know I disagree with you. We historians, we're allowed to disagree. What was the government's stance toward India in the 1930s? So that's the national government. It's the uh, Baldwin and Co, Stanley Baldwin. How did Churchill's stance um, toward India damage his reputation. Now, obviously, you're not going to include things like the Bengal famine or post-1940 um, treatment of India here. Uh, we're talking about within the wilderness years. We're talking about before 1940. So keep it small. If you want to put a footnote about what happens later, please feel free. Um, that's that one. And again, I reckon about, well, it won't take 15 minutes this time because only one lesson to dig through and you've got the swing of things. So I reckon 10 minutes digging and around about 10 minutes writing. So 20 minutes, taking you up to 50 so far. That leaves you with 10 more minutes. Those 10 minutes in this hour that you would have plus homework, so another half hour maybe, so 40 minutes in total, will be used for this. Churchill's attitude to Germany after 1933 and his views about rearmament and appeasement. So you probably can't see it on the screen. Please don't worry about that. Though, actually, I wonder, could I make it? Huh, I could. Hang on. Uh, I've been doing this really bad, Lee. There we go. That's some um, one pin. Go away. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, it'll do. Um, slightly bigger than it was. Uh, what was happening in Germany during the 1930s? Why would this be a concern for the rest of Europe? I feel like Seth Everman. I should probably find a way of doing memes. I, I can't do them. Uh, what was appeasement? Again, not as hard as it sounds, but bear in mind appeasement was not to avoid war. It was to delay war. Be careful. Churchill argues that it's to avoid war and that it was a, an impossible task. Be careful. What was Churchill's view of appeasement and rearmament? Well, that's where you get to let rip with what's become the establishment view of what appeasement actually was. It wasn't, but that doesn't matter. It's Churchill's view, and Churchill's view carries weight later because, well, remember, he's going to write history. It'll be kind to him. Uh, I think he said the other way around. I'm going to move that camera, sorry, it's off centre. Um, did people listen to Churchill's views at the time? Well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. And were his views justified? Was he right in the end? It's a yes and a no response. Each of those boxes, you're not going to write a huge amount. I get that. There's not a lot of words to write here. Plus, you already have your notes. The purpose behind this, and the reason I'm doing the first four pages, well, three pages, I suppose, the first one was um, uh, at the front cover, is that it's getting you to read through those old notes, realize where the holes in your knowledge are, find out what you can retrieve from your old notes, refresh your memory, and then hopefully post in the comments anything you didn't understand or can't remember or can't find in your notes so that I know what to clear up later when I do my lectury stuff. Um, and I'll probably do that by Teams meeting, so that'll make more sense. So basically, this lesson is the first uh, four pages, I suppose, including the front cover. Um, and you notice that that would take about four lessons if we're doing it, sorry, three lessons, if we're doing it four pages per lesson. We won't do exactly that, um, as you'll see, but we'll get reasonably close. And after that, we should be able to do another assessment. I know you've got one on already, and that's due in on Friday, so don't worry about that. There's plenty of time. Some people have already handed it in. You are amazing people. Uh, we'll come back to that on Friday, and I'll mark those for you relatively quickly. Um, and then we'll move on to doing something on this. After a week, we'll have done half the course again, and then we'll be free to um, try some past paper questions. So, I know that that's been a long intro. I know I've said I've given you about an hour and a half's worth of work, but in a, a lesson that would probably have taken us about a lesson to get through to set up, and then I've asked you to get to the same point in homework anyway, so I don't feel guilty. Please don't you either. Um, it's six form, we'll deal with it. Uh, I hope it's interesting. I hope you've got some questions. I hope there are gaps that you go, oh, and I hope there are bits you go, I don't remember doing that. Oh, there it is. And then we can talk about it later and we can share ideas. Now there is a discussion tab on the show my homework, which I, I was unaware of till recently. Uh, and that will allow you to make a comment that literally everyone can see. Comments on the I can see, discussion tab, everyone can see. So if you've got something like a general point where you want to put out some feelers for help, not just me, uh, other students as well, shove it in the discussion tab and don't feel shy about if you see a question there and you know the answer, answering it. Don't wait for me to do it. Um, do it yourselves. You know stuff as well. Surprise me. Make me come in and correct you. Why not? Um, make me do my job. So um, thank you very much. I hope this is interesting. I hope it's some well, I hope it's not exciting. I hope it's something you don't mind doing. Um, I look forward to seeing your responses and talking about them later. Uh, you don't have to submit them. Uh, if you want to, just to check things, uh, that might be a way of asking questions. I appreciate that. You can either do it electronically and send me a half filled in word file, or you can do it by printing it out, filling it in in pen with color and taking a picture and shoving the pictures on uh, one Photograph per page tends to work reasonably well. Um, and I can look at those too. I mean, generally speaking, I'll just be saying whether or not generally you got it right or wrong. I'm not going to go into huge amounts of, oh, I spelt that right wrong. Uh, I'll try and avoid that if I can. Have a lovely day, Year 13. I hope this has made sense. Feel free to go backwards and forwards across the video, however you see fit. And uh, I shall see you in the next video sometime later in the week. Uh, I only see my sets on Mondays and Fridays, but I'm aware that you have other lessons. So I'll try and do it halfway through the week. Um, sorry, yeah, I'll do this one and I'll do one on Friday as well, if that's all right with you guys. Thank you very much. And I shall see you in the next video.